Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be looking at a really big Unify Network application update 9.1.118 that were released to release candidate just a few days ago. This has a ton of great new improvements that we're gonna go over right now, so let's jump right in. The first thing that I'm gonna quickly mention is our traffic flows, which we won't be able to use quite yet because it requires Unify OS 4.2.8 or newer but the traffic flows will gain deep visibility into network activity with detailed insights on all data moving through your system. So this will be really cool when it comes out and I will do a separate video completely on it. One of the first updates within this release is the ability to do a traffic overview, which is gonna show us where we have our top traffic talking to for destinations and we also have active clients. We could also see block traffic and different policies. So we could see our different flows. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into that right now, but then our top destinations. So we could see 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4, which is different DNS. We could also see the top clients that are talking and then the top regions. We're gonna be talking to North America where I live more than anything, but you could see United States, Canada, and then Australia. One thing that they did take out of this map though, is the ability to click on a region and then block it. So if we click right here, we're not able to block it at all. And I do hope that they bring that back in. One major improvement within Unify Network Application 9.1.118 is the ability to have up to eight WANs connected. We have always been limited to just two and then maybe their LTE for a third one, but now we could have eight physical connections. All we need to do is click add WAN. I'll call this WAN three. And then we need to select the port that we want it to go on to. So we're gonna be selecting one of the eight ports within my UDM Pro. I'll just say port one, and then we'll apply the changes. We get to add another WAN, we could call this WAN four, and we could select the port, we'll select port two, we'll apply the changes, and we could go all the way up to eight WANs. So this is gonna be really good for people who need that extra redundancy. Something that's been asked quite a lot over the years is true quality of service, and it does seem that they brought it to us. If we select under routing and then go over to QoS, we could see that we could now prioritize critical traffic or we could create our own custom rules. I'm gonna to go to configure for prioritize critical traffic, and we could see QoS has impact on performance and we could click to learn more. We could give it a name, I'll just leave it at default, and then we could have our different objectives. So select prioritize to give priority to chosen traffic types or limit restricted bandwidth usage for specific traffic types. I'm gonna leave it on prioritize. The source, we could either do it any, we could do a device, or we could do a full network. So if we had a network that was VoIP, which I don't currently have right now, but say the VoIP network is my IoT, I could save that and we're gonna prioritize that traffic first. Now for the destination or the target, we could have it set to any, or we could pick an app, an IP, a domain, or a region. You'd see that we have specific apps already selected. So Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, WebEx, and FaceTime. But we could also click edit, and then we could add any app that we would like that is under this list. I think this is a really great step in the right direction. With this update, there's also been some improvement to the port manager UX. We could see that I have my USW Pro HD PoE set up right here. And if we hover over one of the PoE ports, we could click on it now just to do a power cycle right from the side pane, which I really like. I could press proceed and then that camera will go down and do a full on power cycle. Clicking on port manager, we're gonna see at the top, we have my USW Pro, but if we hit the drop down menu, we now have this SFP analyzer. This is gonna show us everything we need to know about our SFP modules. You could see that I have one in critical, which is using a DAT cable. If we hover over it, we see no signal detected. We have a transmit, but we have no receive. That's because in the transmit, I have it plugged in, but on the received end, I don't. We could also see the native VLAN, the speed, the vendor, the serial, and then we could see the part number and the compliance. One other new feature within the port manager, we could now click on multiple different ports and then we could rename them to whatever we want. This is very helpful if say we have 10 different ports and we wanna name them all camera if they're gonna be a camera port. Next up is the simplification under our VPN client and specifying the devices that we wanna use as well as the different content. So if we were setting up a VPN client, say we wanna route through NordVPN, 
we could say that we have this device wizard and we could either pick the device. So if I select a device, say the backyard fence, which is one of my cameras, we could do that or we could select a full network. Selecting the full network, say the IoT, I always want to go through this NordVPN client. Then we could select which content we want to go through. If we have the content wizard turned off, I believe it's going to send all of our traffic over that VPN. Or we could specify a domain, we could specify an IP, and we could also do a region. It says down below device and content wizard automatically creates a policy based route. Within this VPN client, we also have this kill switch. So it prevents the client device from connecting to the internet if the VPN connection is dropped, which is a nice feature to have in there. Moving on to access points, we could click over on radios and then we have this new air view section. We could see that I've selected all of my access points and we have different things that we could look at. We could see the air time, but if we just want to look at multicast, we could click on that. Same with the airtime, interference, or we could see our TX retries. Scrolling down, we have our AP density, which mine is currently good. And then we have our connectivity. If we just want to select one access point, we could also hit the drop down and we could do that. We could look by the 2.4, the 5, or we could see the 6 gigahertz. This next improvement may not seem like a big deal, but it really is. When we're designing Wi Fi networks, we may not want to have all of our radios on. And in the past Unify network applications, there was no way to turn it off, but now there is. So if we click on our APs, we could see my U7 Pro XGS. We can now go over transmit power and we could completely disable any of the radios, which is a much welcome feature. Another feature that's gonna be good for troubleshooting our clients is the client analyzer. If we click on our clients and then click on my TV, we could see this analyzer. It's going to show us what this is actually working on. So we could see it's on the five gigahertz band on channel width of 80. We could also see the capabilities. So our RX and our TX rates and the Wi-Fi and the signal that we're having. We'd also see the TX retries, the signal strength and different events that are going on with this TV, which is great. We can also test the latency on it. Something else that's new is for our PPSK or private pre-shared keys. If we select it, we could now generate passwords or we could upload the passwords with a CSV file. And this will make it really easy if we're doing large deployments. If we want to generate passwords, all we need to do is click generate password and then select if we want to do an existing or a new network. I'll select an existing and we'll say my IOT. Now we could have our password prefix. So the prefix adds a fixed set of characters to the start of every auto generated password. And then we could select the password length and we could do the complexity. So we have numeric, we have alphanumeric, and then we have complex. So this will be great for places like condo buildings or multi dwelling units. And that's going to be it for my video on Unify Network 9.1.118. And this release brought a ton of great new features. I'm glad now that we have quality of service. We have multi WAN, so up to eight WAN. And we also have those Wi Fi additions where we could turn off certain radios. There is a whole bunch more in 9.1.118, and I will leave the release notes down below as I wasn't able to cover everything. If you have any questions about this video, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.